Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Siemens EDA with Ron Press. We're going to talk today about what's changing in the delivery of scan test data. Ron, we're getting a lot of data that's being delivered these days from scan test. What do you do with this? How do you manage to whittle it down? Because too much data is going to slow down the testing process. That's right. Yeah, thanks, Ed. That's a good question. Because as these designs are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's more and more cores, the amount of data, the amount of channels, and the amount of I.O. pins necessary has just been growing, so it's basically unmanageable. So we've come up with a, a new type of architecture to deal with scan test data delivery called Streaming Scan Network. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Ron, what are we looking at? Okay, so this is basically how you do hierarchical DFT and ATPG. I have several cores and I have some I.O. pins that are feeding in the, the scan test channels into the cores and then output pins. The problem is, as the designs get bigger and bigger and there's more I cores within the designs, it's hard to manage balancing how many channels I'm going to send to each core. So what SSN does is it provides a new way to deal with the scan test data delivery. Instead of having individual channels going to each core, what we do is put in a packetized bus for data delivery. Then it can deal with any number of I.O. pins and any number of channels necessary at the cores. And all these channels are absolutely essential too, right, to make sure that they're working because now you have all this data that needs to move through them. This is the basic problem with the memory wall where you have all these channels and the data is not moving through fast enough. That's right. So one of the important things we can do with a uh, packetized bus is we can operate that bus much faster than the individual cores can shift scan data. So how is this changing? Uh, let me show you. Yeah, so what we've done here is we've taken out those individual I.O. pins and channels going to each core, and we put in a packetized bus and a host node inside each core that is able to interpret when its data is ready on the bus, pull the data off of the packetized bus, its packetized bits, and apply it to the internal uh, embedded compression and scan chain. And you've also raised an abstraction level to here too, right? Because you've got so much data. Yeah, the, the thing that's really nice with this approach is now I can optimize at the core level. I don't have to worry about the embedding and how many pins are available. So if this core here needs two channels or eight channels for its input data and output data, I can just optimize for the core as a standalone. Then when I put it in the embedding, the SSH, the host node, knows when to pull its data off the bus. This bus can be a, a two-bit bus, a 20-bit bus, it doesn't matter. I can still have however many channels data delivered uh, to the core. So you've basically abstracted the data, you've speeded up the delivery of that data, and you've only sent just the amount that you need in order to make it workable, right? That's correct, yeah. And so this bus, like sped up the delivery, this bus can operate at much higher frequencies than internal scan shifting can, can operate. One of the, the cool factors and the, and the key features within SSN is what I'm doing now is I operate really fast. The host node knows when its data packet is ready and pulls it into the, the scan operation. The local clock generation comes from the host node. So this means I don't have to do timing across the entire chip. How's the setup on this? What has to change on that side? What changes is you, you have this one high-speed bus. You just have to time that bus. And then the setup in here, I just have to put in this host node when I'm designing this core. I need to know roughly how many bits uh, my bus is going to be from the entire design. Now, since this is doing the clock generation, I don't have to worry about making a scan enable, a global scan enable, a shift clock, a global shift clock. The scan enable, the shift clock, the capture clock, all that control is coming from within each core. So the timing closure is much simpler. You know, the whole industry is buzzing with AI. They want AI everywhere. Where does AI fit into this? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So this is, I would say, AI-ish. Because what we've done is we've changed the problem so a human doesn't have to do this optimization, have the core embedding optimized with other cores. What we do with the packetized data, now the software can do the smarts and the trade-offs automatically. It'll figure out how to build a packet that has different size patterns for a different number of IOs at each core. As a human, you don't have to worry about that. The software takes care of that. So it's 
kind of adaptive intelligence within the software managing this. A lot of these designs that you're, you're talking about here, though, these really complex designs are one-offs. They're very customized. How do you deal with that? I mean, one of the things, the whole things about EDA is it's always been one tool for many purposes. How does it apply here? What, what you can do, like for instance, if this is an IP core and you're going to use it in different designs, you can optimize with SSN. You can create your test patterns. You might choose uh, an SSH bus, an SSN bus that's the 64 bits or the larger size you're going to use. If you need to use less bits in a design, that's fine. But now that you've created this with its SSN and with the test patterns, you can apply this to any core, uh, any design. So this full plug and play reuse. Does it get harder as you start getting into things like chiplets because you've got a lot more pieces that you have to now test? Yeah, so actually when you get into chiplets, it, it becomes easier because now this is a simple design with just three cores shown. If I have a hundred cores, I don't have to do balancing and managing. I can just put my bus in the design. All these cores can go to the bus. You can have multiple buses if you want, but generally speaking, you put everything on the bus and then later on, you have this really cool flexibility we never had in the industry before. So you might design it for certain patterns and for uh, certain cores to be tested in parallel or all of them tested in parallel. Later on, you can change your mind and say, you know what, I only want to test these 50 cores. You can tell the software, I want to test these 50 cores. I want to test with these patterns and maybe these new patterns. Even if the design's done, the software has the smarts to rebuild the packets and make sure only those cores are tested with those patterns you want. You know, testing has gotten a lot of pressure from manufacturers, the fabs, because it's taking more and more time in order to do this. Does this actually speed things up or does it just keep pace because the complexity is rising so fast? Yeah, that's a good question. So our partners have told us, and they've said this publicly, they've seen speed ups of around 5x faster test time on the tester. Part of the speed up comes in different ways. One is the SSN bus runs fast, faster than your internal scan. Uh, another thing is the optimization is automatic. You can optimize at the core level and then the software optimize the packet delivery. Uh, another factor, which is a really neat side effect, is since we're doing the clock generation inside each core, my cores are not capturing or shifting at the same time. They only shift or capture when they have their right data. So one core might be shifting while another one starts doing its capture. Because of that, the power profile is dramatically reduced. So this allows customers to test the entire design at once, where before a lot of these companies had to test just pieces of the design because of power when they shift everything at once or capture at once. Basically what you're doing here is doing this asynchronously because you really don't care if all the data arrives at exactly the same moment like you do when you're computing. That's correct, yeah. So each core is operating when it feels it needs to do its shift or its capture. And then another really cool side effect is if you have identical cores, you can have two identical cores or a thousand identical cores, the size of your test data and the test time essentially doesn't change because we're serially delivering that same packet information to all those identical cores. We don't need new information. And we do an on-chip compare so we can tell which one of those cores is bad. And so if you're looking at all the data out of a wafer, this may be this one may be bad, this one may be good, but this core, this particular core may be bad. You can potentially build around it or you can do other things with it too, right? Right, yeah, so with the on-chip compare, we'll know if there's a particular core that's bad or multiple cores that are bad. If we want to do a full diagnosis, if only one core is bad, we do have with the packet um, that we deliver the, um, the stimulus data to all the cores, we also deliver the expected data and the mass data and an accumulated status bit. So that accumulated status bit tells us the response for every pattern. If only one core fails, we can do a full diagnosis within that core and find out what's going on, a software diagnosis. If multiple cores fail, we work with the tester company so they can rerun the pattern, but just test one of the failing cores at a time so we'll know exactly what the failing status bits are and we can do a full diagnosis. This is a very different way of looking at the problem how do engineers adapt to this? Well, so, so our customers have adapted really well to it because when they have a big design and there might be, you know, 300, 500 cores or more, the work through 
engineering and architecture that works with such a big design has been really hard. Now this takes that planning aspect and really, really simplifies it. So some of our partners told us they were about a 10 times productivity improvement by not having to do all that planning up front. The software manages it. And then the other thing that helps a ton is the flexibility. You can add new patterns or you can decide certain cores you don't want to test. You tell the tool about that and then the software manages building that type of packet. Ron Press, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.